Hello dear friends, I'm Marina from marsstars.net and in today's video I will talk about the full moon that we have on the 1st of March. This moon will be in Pisces and Virgo. Now, first of all, I will talk about some general indications, basically what it means to have a full moon, more specifically when the, new, when the full moon is in Virgo and Pisces, how to interpret that, what's beneficial to do during this period. Then I will also talk about the concrete aspects that we have from other planets, which can also affect the influence of the full moon. And finally, there will be a short forecast for each of the zodiac signs, so you can know how you can benefit from the full moon. Please listen to your sun and ascendant sign in order to get the whole picture. And of course, if you're interested in having a personal report, you can check the description below this video. Now, let's start with the general information that we need. So, first of all, the full moon will be on the 1st of March and the specific positions are 12 degrees in Virgo for the Moon and 12 degrees in Pisces for the Sun. So please check if you have any planets or cusps of a houses which are close to this degree. The orbis which you can use is around 5 degrees. If you have planets within less than 5 degrees around the Sun or the Moon, then this full moon will have a very strong impact on your life or at least in specific life areas. Now, the other thing which is important is generally to understand what it means to have a full moon. Basically, this is typically an opposition between the sun and the moon. And this is the time when we are capable of seeing something, realizing something. Literally, when you look outside during the night, you can see the biggest size or the whole size of the moon. So the same is true in terms of our ideas and in our lives or concrete life areas. We can clearly see something, we can realize something in our lives. So that's the most important about the full moon. And the other thing which we can do is also to separate with something. This is the time when you can increase the space within you or around you and the unnecessary stuff can go out of your life. Of course, there are some general rules here and the most important is that you, ha you shouldn't have some negative emotions about the things that you would like to release. If you have strong emotions, then you attract more of those stuff. So you can let go only the things which you are more neutral to. So that's very important. But anyway, the full moon is the best time when you can make that step. When you can just relax more and try to set free from the unnecessary. And you can only set free from things which you are ready to release. So don't push yourself too much. Just try to do it naturally without any kind of force. Of course, the sign positions are extremely important. In our case, we have the Moon in Virgo, the Sun in Pisces. So, generally, this axis is related to balancing our intellect, our mind and also our emotions. So, this might be one of the most important topics about this full Moon. Basically, finding the balance between what your mind is saying and also what your heart is telling you. And in some cases, it may not be so easy and maybe you need to set free from some of those stuff which are just no longer useful, like maybe some uh, old patterns of beliefs or ideas that you have had or maybe some kinds of emotions which are hurtful or painful or in any way not helpful for you. The other things which are important for this full moon are also the idea of helping others. Both Virgo and Pisces are related to helping, serving, supporting other people. So maybe these are some topics that you can think about as well, but think the way you are doing this. Are you really helpful for other people? Are you hurting yourself by helping others? Are you making some unnecessary sacrifices? Generally, these are questions which you can ask yourself. And maybe this is the time when you can switch something, you can turn the overall idea of how you can help, how you can serve other people. Because if you're hurting yourself, you're not helping other people. Because at some point, 
you won't be able to provide the help anymore. So first think about yourself. Think about how you can heal yourself, how you can help yourself, how you can serve yourself better. And after that, you will be capable of really helping other people. And some people think that it's selfish and it's uh, really something bad to think about yourself. In my opinion, in order to help other people, first you, you need to help yourself. First you need to take care of yourself. And health is another topic which is extremely important. Both Virgo and Pisces are related to health issues. So this is a great time if you would like to start a new health regime, which includes maybe stop doing something which is not healthy for you. It could be, you know, stop uh, eating some bad foods or maybe uh, stop smoking or try to release some of your addictions. And addictions is definitely a topic about related to Pisces and Neptune. So this could be the time when you can think about those stuff and you may decide that it's the right time to make the next step and just stop doing those things which are harming your body and your health in general. And the other stuff which are important, also finding the balance between your work and the time that you take for rest. This is something extremely important. Virgo are, or basically the sign Virgo is more related to hard work. Uh, sometimes those people can be workaholics or, you know, they may spend too much time on work. And Pisces is the sign which is about total isolation and just avoiding responsibility and living in your own reality and maybe, you know, just falling in the trap of some illusions. Of course, these are the two uh, polarities. It's uh, not necessary that they're so intense, but I'm just using this as an example to show the differences. So generally we need to find the balance. If you're living only in your own world, in some kind of illusions, in the trap of some unrealistic expectations, it's not healthy. And the other um, in, the other option is not healthy as well when you are only, you know, focused on working and reality, the material world, and you are missing all of the possibilities that your imagination can bring you. So just trying to find, try to find the balance between those areas in life. Now let's talk about the concrete aspects that we have because it's also very, very important. First of all, the most important aspect is the exact conjunction between Neptune and the Sun. Neptune is also the ruler of Pisces, meaning the ruler of the Sun in this position. So the aspect is extremely important and it brings even more things like imagination and creativity and inspiration on the positive side. And on the negative side, it's about the unrealistic expectations and your illusions, which maybe is time you, for you to realize in order to set free and to start living in a more realistic environment. So Neptune definitely intensifies the situation very much and can make us extremely emotional and we need to we, we definitely need to try to use our intuition but also to have a realistic approach because the moon is in Virgo and Virgo is about being realistic and being analytical and seeing things as they are focusing on the concrete information that you have not only on your mind and your expectations or your dreams so something very important, Neptune and the conjunction with the Sun. Also, we have Mercury and Venus in Pisces. Now, they're not so close to the Sun, but in my opinion, there is a conjunction between the Sun and Mercury. And because we have also conjunction between Mercury and Venus, it also makes Venus in conjunction with the Sun. So basically, we have a huge stellium in Pisces between the Sun, Neptune, Mercury and Venus. Four planets in Pisces. Neptune is the ruler of the sign, so Neptune is extremely strong and Venus is exalted here. Venus is exalted in Pisces, meaning that it's also very strong. So the emotions are very intense on a very high level. About Mercury, we should say that Mercury is in a fall position which means a very weak position because Mercury rules the opposite sign. Basically, Mercury is the ruler of the moon, which is in Virgo. So it means that when Mercury is very weak, 
uh, it, it's not always something bad, but it means that the typical qualities of mercury are just missing. And the typical qualities of mercury are being analytical and practical, noticing the details. So in this case, we might be incapable of seeing the small things. And we are more concerned about the bigger picture, the meaning of something, our intuition, spiritual stuff. Those things can have a stronger impact over our decisions, our lives and everything. But anyway, it also requires from us to try to analyze those things as much as we can, or at least to admit some things, to be you know, more self-analytical in terms of the decisions that we would like to take. The other aspects which are extremely important, well, I think the most important are the aspects between Saturn and the Sun and the Moon, because these are major supportive aspects. Saturn is in Capricorn, also very strong position for Capricorn, and it will be there for quite a long time. But Saturn in this case is supporting the full moon, making sextile with the sun and trine with the moon. Which means that even if we are in some kind of you know, illusions or we are dreaming or we are fantasizing, we need to stay grounded. We need to stay in touch with reality. And also to be more practical as much as we can in terms of the decisions we would like to take. The positive side is also that Saturn can help us to materialize things. So it's not only in your head and in your dreams and expectations, but you can really achieve that in your reality and you can make it visible. So Saturn actually is very, very supportive in this, well, kind of a mess that we have in Pisces. The other aspects that we have, so Jupiter is the other support. Jupiter will make creative aspects with the Sun and the Moon. There is a quintile and a half with the Sun and quintile with the Moon. Now these are one of the more specific aspects. Uh, if you want to learn more about those interesting aspects, you can, um, you can find my webinar about the aspects, which you can find in the description as well. But the most important you need to know about the creative aspects is that they bring opportunities for changes. They can be very positive and supportive, but you need to take some action and you need to make your choices in order to benefit. And Jupiter is basically the great benefactor. So we have the potential to make something really great but it's not necessary that it will happen. So it's not like having the trine from Jupiter when you know the opportunities can knock on your door and you just have to open the door and everything is a magic. It's not the case. With the creative aspect, you have to make some choices. Sometimes they may not be easy and you need to be ready for the change. This is very important, but if you are, then Jupiter with the creative aspects is really, really supportive. And then we have some challenging aspects from Mars and Uranus. Mars will make karmic aspects. This is also, these are also one of the more interesting and traditional aspects. There is a binonagon with the sun and centagon with the moon. The most important we should know about the karmic aspects is that they bring some unexpected situations which could be quite stressful. The energy is very intense but for a shorter period of time and with Mars it's all about taking action and being initiative and brave and when we are talking about the challenging side it could also bring a lot of impulsive reactions and actions and generally we might be a little bit more aggressive and we may be um, forcing things to happen too quickly and sometimes it's not the case sometimes especially with Saturn making the positive aspects with the Sun and the Moon we need to be patient and the karmic aspects from Mars with the Sun and the Moon suggest that there might be tension if we are too impulsive and if we want immediate results and Uranus is kind of a similar influence in this case there are uh, so we have a semi square with the Sun and a square and a half with the moon. Uranus is in Aries here. These are minor but challenging aspects, which means the influence is not so powerful and strong, but it forces us to push things and maybe to take some action. 
And Uranus is about the change. Uranus is about new things, adventures, and growing on a different level, you know, having a different life. So this is all an option for us, but we have to take action. And it can also make us a little bit more impatient and wanting things to happen quickly and quickly, but it's just not the right attitude. We need to stay calm. We need to be wise because of Saturn. We need to be uh, patient and hardworking. That's the right strategy. And try to find the balance between emotions and intellect, ideas and dreams and all of those stuff. Okay, so now let's say a few words about each of the zodiac signs. And this is a very short forecast and I would recommend you also to listen to your sun and ascendant sign. Now the most important you should know is that the place where the moon is falling in your chart is where you can make some changes in your life or you can materialize something and you can achieve some visible results because the moon is the most material planet even though a lot of people think it's Saturn, well, it's not. The moon is the most material planet. So in this case, the moon is very strong. It's very bright. You can see it on the sky, meaning that you can materialize something in the area of your life where you have the moon falling. Now for Aries, we have the full moon in 6th and 12th house. So generally, it means that they need to find the balance between work, and taking a rest and also to maybe make some changes in terms of their working process or work environment or business projects and ideas. Also, this is a great time to change something in terms of your health and diet or regime in general. For Taurus, the full moon is in fifth and 11th house, finding the balance between your personal desires and the uh, ideas of other people or the desires of other people and generally fifth house is also about your love life about creativity so this is the area on which you should focus and where you can really materialize things also for children or you know creative projects this is very supportive full moon then for gemini the full moon is in fourth and tenth house now, the, this is an important full moon because it activates cardinal axis in the horoscope. And it also suggests that you can change something in terms of family, your home, the environment around you, or the people who are your family members. Generally, those are the main topics. Then for Cancer, the full moon is in third and ninth house. So generally finding the balance between your ideas and your future goals. So what you're doing currently in order to achieve your future goals. And you have to change something right now. Third house is about the present time. So your reality, what are you doing concretely? Your ideas or education or even traveling could be some important topics for Cancer. For Leo, the full moon is in second and eighth house. The axis related to resources, including money and energy. So finding the balance in those areas is very important to you. And you can change also something in terms of your personal attitude towards money. Maybe how you're earning money, how you're spending your money, what are your plans and ideas about how much you can earn, how much you can give to other people in general. For Virgo, the full moon is, of course, extremely important. It falls in your first and seventh house. And the moon in first house suggests that you can make some personal changes. They could be in terms of your relationships or generally your attitude towards other people or life at all. So focus on yourself and what you can change for yourself in order to improve your life. It could be about appearance, it could be about uh, your diet or about your health, work, love life, everything which affects you personally. Then for Libra, the full moon is in 12th and 6th house. And this could be quite a spiritual full moon for you, which means that you really can change a lot of things and they, those changes are starting from your mind. They are starting from your emotions, setting free from your past, realizing some important things that maybe are blocking the things you would like to attract and just releasing the past. 
So focus more on spiritual things or maybe spending more time on your own and separating with the past. For Scorpio, the full moon is in 11th and 5th house. So maybe it's time for you to change something in terms of your ideals, your expectations for the future and the change that you would like to manifest in your life or in the lives of the people around you or maybe with your work. But generally, be more socially oriented. Also, it could be about your friendships or people who are like-minded souls who are important to you. Then for Sagittarius, the full moon is in 10th and 4th house, also very important cardinal axis. And those type of changes might be very important for how people are seeing you. Uh, it's about your reputation and career or generally about your success. So it's a great time to think about what you can change in terms of your plans in this area. Then for Capricorn, the full moon is in third, sorry, in ninth and third house. And it's time to think about your future. Think about what you need to change. Um, have you planned what you want to achieve maybe in five years, in 10 years? Maybe something needs to be changed in that area. And also in terms of your beliefs or your education, your skills, but those are the more philosophical way of thinking or knowledge that you need to work on and mostly about your future. Then Aquarius, they have the full moon in 8th and 2nd house, also axis related to resources and money. And this time you may need to change your attitude towards investments or how much you are spending. Also, if you receive help from other people, maybe your partner or some investors in terms of your business, this can also be a very important topic during the next month for you. Then for Pisces, also very important full moon because we have the moon falling in your seventh house and the sun with all of the other Pisces planets are in your first house. So you can change mostly things related to relationships and partnerships and how you are treating other people or how you would like them to treat you. So this could be a very important time when you can realize maybe some models which you have which are not beneficial for you and you can transform that and generally for your love life or for the area of relationships this can be a very very important full moon so these are the most important astrological indications we have plus the short forecast for the 12 signs don't forget if you want a personal report you can find that in the description below also you can subscribe to my channel if you would like to get more of those videos plus my daily astrology horoscopes thank you so much for joining me and i'll see you very soon